Hello everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. Today we're going to be talking about our top five assets. Let's go, Bryn. Your number five is... Survival Knife, level two. Yeah, I was really high on the Survival Knife when the first one came out, and Travis kept telling me I was stupid for it. Uh, I still, like, I mean... This one's like actually sick. Uh, not just I agree like with cool both like those statements. Yeah. I still think you're kind of stupid for liking level one, zero. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you get the angry cultist comes at you in the night, and you just you, you just stab him first. Mm -hmm. Or spiders. Yeah, or spiders, or mm -hmm. actually anything. Yeah, you know, like Yig Yig attacks you, and you're like, I'll get you. Yeah, I'll get you, Yig. <laughs> just you watch it. And give him the old one-two stab. Mm -hmm. uh, no, mine... it's just it's just sweet. My number five is Blood Pact. I've always... I approve. ...been really intrigued by this card. When I first saw it, I was like, but Doom is bad, isn't it? <laughs> the flavor of it <laughs> is so good. Um, there is an, uh, a little-known secret that I started recording but just eventually stopped playing. Uh, was a Jim Culver Blood Pact <laughs> solo run. Um, yeah, that was like only like Dunwich Legacy time. So very <laughs> small card pool. It went very poorly, and then I was like, you know what? I don't think I can do this right now. But no one wants to watch this. I don't want anyone to see this. Yeah, this is this is my <laughs> secret shame that needs to just die here. Um, I just think Blood Pact is such a cool freaking card. It gets like so many gears in my head moving, and I think it, it came in at a point in the game when the design was so exciting with it that it's just always been like, I see Blood Pact and I'm like, yeah, of course that's one of my top five assets. Let's open up a new tab so I can save it. <laughs> Travis? Uh, I got Key of East. This is a card like I simultaneously hate, but also like, um... Key of use is good. I don't think anyone needs to tell you that. And one of the most fun times I had in the game, and also that convinced me that this card was broken beyond belief, was playing, I think it was our second time playing through the path to Carcosa. And I played a character who's supposed to be a support. I played Carolyn Fern, her book version. And I was the best at everything all the time. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I remember after that you were like banning. I'm banning this in multiplayer play because I know whoever someone's just gonna be like five experience. Give me key of yeast. I want it. Yeah, like it's not even like I like it because it made me feel incredibly powerful. I got to dictate what we did in the game. The part I didn't like about it is because I could see from the other side. I'm like, this is not fun for my teammates to play with when they're like, I kill monsters. I'm like, I do it better. I, I can discover clues. I do it better. Like I've played with Key of Use once within within my solo Finn. Uh and it's nice having four brain with Finn, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and then like seven foot. Like <laughs> Yeah. No, like I do really like the flavor of the card and stuff. And I think that would be okay. Like it doesn't need to be ten experience for non Carcosa campaigns. Mm -hmm. I think it could I think it's pretty comfortable at like seven ish. But yeah, yeah. I one thing that really salts me about it, though is how they put the wild symbol above the brain symbol on this one. I don't That's think they do a bit that for fucking screwy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't look right. Uh but yeah, cards like is doing horror to you right now. Yep. Yeah, cards just. I've had good times with it, but those are the only times I'm gonna have with it. Yeah. All right, number four, Bryn. You know, uh, the Lucky Cigarette case is pretty sweet. You ever wanted to draw, like, almost your entire deck because you paid two for an accessory slot item? Yes. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, like, you, you, could, you can kind of just do that. You're like, I committed a manual dex to this evasion, and the game's like, okay. Yeah. And then you just draw two cards. You're like, it didn't even cost me anything. Hey, maybe Innsmouth's the first time I asked to play the green, or yeah, the green character. <laughs> Who knows? Well, you, a... could play, you could play a green-yellow character in Innsmouth. I know. That's yeah. why I was asked to play it. <laughs> but yeah, 
Lucky Cigar Case is pretty sweet. It's even got an upgrade now for three XP, where you get to you get to search through the top X cards, where X is the amount that you you succeeded by. That one is stronger than this one, but this is this is like my Lucky Cigarette Case. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. no, I don't like about Lucky Cigarette Case. <clears throat> it doesn't have it's... the Elder sign on it, or it does, and it doesn't it hasn't stopped a bullet this time. No, it's That's not a fortune one. card. It's the yeah. Lucky Cigarette yeah. Case, and it's not a fortune. Lucky yeah. is a fortune card. Yeah, Rex, Rex can play it, which is, like, kind of wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's number, just like a bit of player disconnect. Uh, my number four is Charisma. Kind of like he and for Travis. Uh, it's, like, this card's here because of, like, for me, it's, I don't particularly enjoy the card. I think Charisma is, like, a little bit, especially in the early days, it was like, oh, good, I'm buying a Charisma because I have to because allies are so strong. I remember being salty about this card in like after two campaigns. Yeah, but luckily it's balanced out a lot, and we actually don't have too many charisma pickups anymore. Like, it's now like for decks that need it. Luckily, the card pools expanded to the point where other things are competitive for your experience. But I've always liked uh, like there's always been that lingering kind of attachment to charisma, and it has my boy on it, right? <laughs> so I can't He's say no to my hunter. boy Charlie Kane. Yeah. So. That's all I have to say about this one. Yeah. I still, I'm not sure that we've had a campaign where we didn't buy, someone didn't buy a Charisma. Yeah, someone still does, but like there was times where like we were all like picking up Charisma because it was just like the right choice, right? Oh yeah, like part of the part of those just didn't have other things to spend experience on, so I'm yeah. I'm a lot more happy with this because this card yeah. occupies now. But plus, uh, plus at that point, like allies were just stronger than every other asset you could play. Yeah, if we had flamethrowers and shit. Yeah, but no, no, like they're not. Uh, they're not quite so good. There's like other things to do. Yeah. Travis, what's your number uh, four? I got well prepared. This guy shaves. Do you he shave? Does. It's how you prepare for the day. Card it's how you get break. plus three to your punch tests. Oh, baby. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I see, like, man. Every time I play a blue character, like I just like subconsciously evaluate the cards in my deck to see if it's worth playing well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> like if you got enough at if you're like, man, my weapon just gives me two punch, like I could just get four punch with well prepared every turn. Yep. Like it's so good. It's so cool. It's a build around that's like not really a build around. But you still feel like clever for building around it you know definitely i know exactly what you mean yeah uh i don't think it's the best from this like a little cycle they got but i think is definitely it's easily my favorite yeah yeah and just the art it's just like a guy getting ready for the day it's so <laughs> innocuous it's so, it's so perfect in contrast to the rest of the uh arkham horror mythos stuff where it's just you know, you think well prepared like a guy. He's like, oh yeah, I got ten thousand guns loading up my shotguns. Make sure I got extra ammo. No, it's just a guy is shaved and he's getting ready for his work day. He's got yeah. a suit on. I don't know why he shaved with a suit on, but he probably can't just have a shirtless guy shaving. That's probably something that they're. Well, it's probably uh, old art. Like this seems like art from the Call of Cthulhu days. Yeah, but still, it's probably something that uh, yeah. someone vetoed at some point. They're like, why are we printing a card with a shirtless man on it? Dude freaking reminds me of a hitman for sure. Like the gun hanging off the mirror. This guy's ready to kill somebody and he's well prepared and he's going to do, do be stylish when he's doing it. Uh, Justin, you might not know since you weren't alive in the 30s, but everyone just took guns to work. That's true. I mean, technically, I, technically you're right. Lawyers. I wasn't alive in the 30s, but dang. Uh, Bryn, what's your number three? The Enchanted Blade. The blue one. <laughs> Uh, so this thing's like a lightsaber, man. Uh, yeah, sick. <laughs> you, you get plus two to your fight, to your attacks. You can deal extra damage, but you don't have to spend the charges until you know if you hit them or not. If you do and you spent the charge, then you get to heal a horror and draw a card. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It takes up a, it takes up an arcane slot. Who cares? You're blue. Yep. That That's one campaign we did was say. such a home run for both of us, Bryn. <laughs> and Justin with his subpoena deck. Yeah, yeah. Everyone just had a blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was good. Uh, my number three is the Red Gloved Man. Uh, I've played with him a few times, but it's not so much actually just the uh, the card itself. It's I love this character 
who has appeared in all of the games at this point. Um, and I just love the vibe that he has with it. Um, because he was something bad in Eldritch Horror, and here he's someone that was on your team, and he's a conspirator, which is a sick-ass trait. And he's also, he's Gandalf. Like, that's the other part. <laughs> he is also this game's Gandalf. Yeah, so Gandalf is from Lord of the Rings, a card game, where he would have an effect when he came into play, and at the end of the round, he's discarded, but he has, like, a major yeah. effect, and he also had, like, massive health and damage that you could soak on him. Uh... And the Red Glove Man has that as well. And uh, he's also fast. Because of course he is. Look how slender and sleek his frame is. So before we get to my card, who do you guys think the Red Glove Man is? think he's a Mego in disguise? think he's a Yithian? you think he's an aspect of Nerolathotep? I, I lean towards Nerolathotep a little bit. I also Where he's lean... like, I can't mess with humanity if Yog sothoth escapes. So I should give him a hand. I also wager that it's near Lathotep, um, yeah. mostly because like his purpose changes from story to story that he's in, which seems the most like a near Lathotep thing to do, right? He's also a conspirator. Yeah, as a subtype, which is that's a really yeah. cool subtype. That's a really that's actually those subtypes are a really good way of. Uh, differentiating certain cards make them feel special to be real i wish even though the whole mystery of who he is is exciting i wish it was just like ally conspirator mask and then you're like no! you just know yeah <laughs> there's Man, like that small moral dilemma you're like hmm. <laughs> what if it's just pete from the future that's even more exciting my gloves are dyed with the the blood of my my dog <laughs> Uh, Travis, what's your number three? Uh, this is Seal the Seventh Sign. I think this this card is incredibly cool. It makes you feel incredibly powerful to play. It's got the commit symbols in the correct order. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this card is like... Man, this card, this card honest, is so I wouldn't bad. play this card if I didn't play with you guys. It just, like, Travis spends four to play it, and then I just I'm just like... Two turns later, so you're ready to discard it? Yeah, I'm just... I'm, That's like, just it. That's it. I'm just sad that Bryn is so excited to smash the seal open. Yeah. He's like, let no, This card's out. a 100% coin flip. great! Either Bryn just, like, draws bad tokens and makes me throw it away in a couple turns, <laughs> or he hits, like, the auto-fail, like, three times, and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> or, like... I mean, like, theoretically, he, could hit, he won't be able to go out and play, but, like, for the amount that he draws them, it's just, like... Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and the art. It's, it's, it's just a very, it's a very powerful feeling card. It's very cool. I like that there is a uh, sort of like an apex card for the ceiling archetype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's go to number two. Bryn, you're number two. It's a sawn off shotgun. They took away my ability to sleight of hand shotguns into play, but then they gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> it's 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 like a, it's like the shotgun, but you don't actually get any bonus to your fight, so you're on your own to make the make the most of this like succeed by up to six <laughs> test. Um, Anything you can do. Yeah, yeah, but like if you're playing Winifred, that's probably not going to be an issue. Yeah. Uh, plus, if you fail badly enough, you can actually just one shot one of your teammates. They're like, I'm feeling pretty good. I haven't taken damage yet. And you're like, watch this. <laughs> and you draw the red token and they die. Yeah. And you're like, I've done it. Like, huh. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, my number two is Dark Horse. I can't lie to you guys. Like, I could have tried to grab things, you know. That were a bit more exciting. But I'm the Dark Horse guy. That's I, disingenuous. Yeah, no, like, I initially, I saw this, and I was like, how come this isn't level one, or this isn't number one? And I remembered. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> you, you know. Everyone knows, Justin. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I, I enjoy having the numbers on my card be very big. And Dark Horse lets me do that. Right? So, I just, it's it. It's the card. I also noticed a lot of these cards are like from four of my five cards. 
Five of my cards are from the Dunwich <laughs> Legacy cycle. I would say a good, good, good cycle. It's yeah, it's a good cycle for Justin, I guess. But uh, yeah, I can't lie to you. I have no nothing else to say. Dark Horse is just how it's the most common deck I built in red. So I, I mean, to lie Dunwich to you. Carcosa era was like probably our golden age for Arkham. I would agree. Like, like, right now, I mean, like not in golden age. I'd say we're still in the golden age. It was like platinum age for Arkham. I know. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I think we're entering like a second age of Arkham right now. Like so, back then it was like the fun and exploration. Right now we're in an analytical golden age of Arkham. Right where mm -hmm. we're start. We're more about the discussion than we are about the playing. So like we're we're touching new avenues and building new strategies. The forgotten I agree with age. That. Is I, I also undone. see like. I see another golden age on the horizon past this one where we start to get into more restrictive deck building. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and we get to explore more new things. Uh, but... The Dark Age was definitely Forgotten Age and Circle Undone, though. I think we can... That's... I think it was like the second... Uh, I think it was Circle Undone. Yeah, Forgotten Circle Age, Undone the first was... time we played through it, we had a great time, and then past, like, after the second... Or after the first playthrough. Yeah. It was like, eh. All right, Travis, what's your number two? Um, this is Dream Enhancing Serum. Justin, I have a hundred cards in my <laughs> hand. <laughs> I like this archetype. I like drawing cards. Um, Travis also can't lie to you. I like Dream Enhancing guys. Serums. Yep. He just can't lie to you. It's also just, it's you. Yeah, if you guys have been watching our channel for a while, like you could probably guess a fair number of our cards. Draw a shotgun for Brendan is like a little out of left field because he hasn't played with it yet, but <laughs> but it make, it checks out like it, it makes sense. No, no, his reason is one hundred percent what I would expect. Yeah. Yeah, All like right. I mean that I, I do miss the heady days of power where you could sleight of hand like the uh, the bar or yeah you know like a lightning gun <clears throat> to play, but. That's this will okay. have to do for now, right? That's okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number one, everyone watching at home, right now I want you to take a moment and try to guess everyone's number one. All right? You're good? Bryn, what's your number Dustin's. one? I know mine. Bryn's, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Go yeah. for it, bud. Yeah, the, so, like, since the first time I played this game, like, I sat... Sat down to play uh, play the gathering, and uh, Travis handed me a pile of cards with Skids O'Toole on top, and he was like, "You're late. You get the last one." <laughs> <clears throat> the only thing I know about these ones is that you should hard mulligan for Leo DeLuca, and I was like, "You don't tell me what to do." And then, you know, like I got to play some games with Leo DeLuca, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I do." <laughs> nah, he was right. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell him, but he was right. Yeah. <laughs> Bryn, would you would you say that Leo DeLuca is your big man on campus? Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of green allies I want to play with. Yeah, there's some spicy ones. But Leo does get cut. Yeah. A reasonable get, amount of time. It's tough to it's tough to beat Leo. Yeah, he has that special place in your heart. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm pretty excited about Chuck Fergus, but we'll get there. Leo's the guy. Yeah, Leo's the <clears throat> guy. Uh, so this might be a shock to everyone, but my number one is Pete Sylvester. Did you guys know that he is the big man on campus and that he can, like, never die? So in turn, you never die? And did you also know he's my boyfriend and I love him very much? Well, now you do. Pete Sylvester, any of our my number one. <laughs> I don't have much of else. I've talked about Pete so much. If this is your first video, uh, I love Pete like more than anything. He's my boyfriend. That's all you need to know. <laughs> all right, uh, my number one card actually might be a little bit of a surprise because I don't play blue characters too too often. But damn, if I don't love playing stick to the plan, yeah, in every blue deck I can. Uh. I'm probably like the spikiest of the group, I'd say, to a certain extent, where I just, I just like to kind of win the game good. I just like to do things good. Um, Justin and Bren both trend a little bit more towards gimmicks or like, 
you know, oh, I wonder how this would work, or I wonder if I can make this work. And I'm like, I would like to do what I do good, and I like to do it all the time. Mm-hmm. And stick to the plan, especially when it comes to killing monsters, lets you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean you didn't spend almost a year playing with sleight of hand? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I uh, I don't play Mabel and Vesquez. I've played Zoe once. I've played Mark Harrigan a couple times. I can remember, and stick to the plan with a uh, prepared for the worst, with an ever vigilant, and with a, a third card under it is is my bread and butter. Mm-hmm. You know, you get your weapon, you play it for reduced cost, and then you start killing stuff. It's good. I like yeah. it. It is true. It's it, it's a bit of a surprise, but when you strip it down, stick to the plan is basically like uh, super tutor at the start of the game. It's like three, three extra, extra cards in my hand, hand baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's actually a little bit ironic because this card didn't glug, make. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> yeah. A little bit ironic that this card didn't make uh, my experienced blue cards list. It didn't. That's a twist. It is. I think I actually just kind of forgot about it at the time, but. Dang. Yeah, we every time we're we do these that videos, one you guys it, like it. it's a new freaking day every time we record another one of these. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, if anyone has any list suggestions uh, for videos, let us know in the comments below. We don't even need to do like top fives, just even like anything you want. Make a topic. Like even if we did like uh, we even if you wanted to see like our favorite ancient ones, like not even like just like in the lore of Arkham Horror, like the Arkham Files. We'll do it. Man, if I you guys want to hit us with our favorite ancient ones from Arkham Second Edition, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do Come it. <laughs> I mean next next week we have a bit of a, a different one for our list, but I'm not gonna spoil it. You'll just have to come back uh next Thursday at four o'clock PM mountain time to see what that one's gonna be. I'm very excited. We're gonna record it right now. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and as always, GG's.